Fleet's journal. It would seem that I must stay here in Riften if I am to resolve this issue with Carlia. She has not yet arrived at the Ragged Flagon. I was able to conclude my business with Delvin. Astrid was right. He was willing to buy this item. That's surprising, given how much trouble being seen with this could get him in. I'm sure he has a plan by now. Honor to you, my pain. Sitting idle in Riften while this letter of credit burns a hole in my pocket vexes me. I'm restless and my head aches. This is the third time in as many days that I have experienced the pain, always around the dead eye. The pain comes without warning and then subsides. Neither wine nor sleep have helped. I need to conclude this business with Carlia and be gone. There is too much work to be done. It fills us with rage. What harm does it bring to us now? You have some nerve coming back here after what you did to Kirava. Sure thing. It's yours for a day. Drink for the thirsty, food for the hungry. Welcome, dear viewers, to Couch Warrior TV on YouTube. I am the Couch Warrior, and you are watching Aranus Arcana, a Skyrim Let's Play. This is Chapter 8, Part 6. I'll show you to your room. Right this way. Still here. In the last episode, we traveled to Riften and spent our time down in the Ragged Flagon taking care of some business. I've got your we bag. had the amulet appraised. We received a letter of credit from Delvin. We turned over several objects Yarrow of interest to Delvin and were paid for those. In we turned in a piece of Thieves' Guild armor to Tenelia. A gift and had an unusual service. gem appraised. Will know to look At this point, if you tell them we you have are. exited the Ragged Flagon, and we are waiting. We are waiting here in the Bee and Barb. We are going to spend the night. We're going to go back to the Ragged Flagon in the morning and check to see if Carlia has arrived yet. If you remember, we were instructed to meet her here. Well, we have arrived in advance of Carlia. So we have a little bit of time to kill, and as is apparent from the journal entry at the beginning of this episode, Fleet is not excited about the idea of waiting around in Riften when he feels like he has more pressing things to be doing for the Thieves' Guild. I'm right behind you. I'm going to ask Lydia to just hang out. I'm going to have her... Uh, wait here but kind of go about her business so I'll be able to spot her in the morning look at that, maybe she's going to get a room too and Nefe if you recall from the journal entries of the last episode is actually down in the stables working, earning her keep We're going to get a little bit of rest here, and we're going to head out early in the morning. And move things forward. This Lydia is a woman of substance. Perhaps a bit stiff, but as reliable as they come. She follows instructions and works hard, combined with her fearlessness in battle, she is the ideal subordinate. Or is she? She and I have only just met, and if she is as loyal to me, who else might she owe her allegiance to? I have not yet tested her loyalty, and until such time as I have done so, I will trust her with nothing. Nefe, however, will have to determine her own destiny. 
I cannot guide her until she is ready to receive my lessons. She proves that talent is not enough. I will break her down to her essence, and we shall see who she really is. Well, six hours of sleep, and we are ready to proceed down to the Ragged Flagon. What is this? Telenjai. I have checked with Maramal, and I'm certain an arrangement can be made to incorporate the traditional Argonian bond ceremonies. Bonding ceremonies? Should the need arise, it would be our pleasure to receive you at the temple and have Marmel perform a marriage ceremony between yourself and Kirava. But we request the appropriate tie to be made, as we previously discussed. Hmm. That is a bit sad. Of course, we killed Fleet. Fleet killed Kirava at the request of of you, the dear viewers. I am your sword and your shield. And it would appear that Lead we've ruined way. someone's life in the process. <laughs> All right, I'm going to bring Lydia with me. Now, of course, what we're doing here is we're trying to further the Thieves' Guild quest. We're trying to figure out where Mercer went. And at this point, all we've been able to do is decode Gallus's journal, which basically accuses Mercer Frey Still here. of stealing money from the Thieves' Guild. Now, we essentially have to prove that the contents of the journal are true. And there's really no way to do that other than to go to the Thieves' Guild with Carlia and actually talk to Brynjolf and see if we can go inside the vault and, and look. I mean, it's really, it seems as though that is the only way to do this. My feeling is that huh? in this situation, Fleet is going to be, in essence, acting as a as a go between for Carlia and the Thieves Guild. He is essentially going to be there to vouch for Carlia and get her in the door long enough to make her case. We of course have personal experience with Carlia. We are the only ones in the Thieves Guild who do at this point. Um, at least at least uh, in recent history. So with any luck, she will be here now. And we will provide her with an escort. Yes, there she is. I'm glad you're here. I think some of these people are beginning to suspect who I am. Are you ready to face the guild? I'm ready. Let's Keep go. Keep your eyes open. I'm not sure what to expect when we enter the system. All right. Now, at this point, I think I'm going to run up ahead of her. Fleet feels the need to sort of act as, as something of a bodyguard for her until we're able to determine whether or not people here are going to be threatening. Okay. These guys look threatening, so I stand in between them and Carlia so she can get down the hall, and then Fleet is going to follow her.
So she has alluded to the Nightingales up to this point. And Fleet has a book of his own, Nightingale's Fact or Fiction, which is part of his library. He has studied that book cover to cover, and he knows what it pro- you know, proclaims about have a damn good the Nightingales. But there's still a lot left Please. unanswered at this point. Lower your weapons so we can speak. I have proof that you've all been misled. No tricks, Carlyle, or I'll cut you down where you stand. Now what's this so-called proof you speak of? I have Gallus's journal. I think you'll find its contents disturbing. Let me see. No, it can't be. This can't be true. I've known Mercer too long. It's true, Brynjolf. Every word. Mercer's been stealing from the guild for years, right under your noses. There's only one way to find out if what the last says is true. Delvin, I'll need you to open the vault. Wait just a blessed moment, Bryn. What's in that book? What did it say? It says Mercer's been stealing from our vault for years. Gallus was looking into it before he was murdered. Mag and Mercer open up a vault that needs two keys. Is it possible? Could he pick his way in? That door has the best puzzle locks money can buy. There's no way it can be picked open. Ah, it may have puzzle locks, but we've seen uh, Mercer Frey personally open more than one difficult door in Snowvale Sanctum. If anybody's capable of opening a door like this, it would be him. So Fleet wouldn't be surprised by any of it, that's for sure. But the vault still locked up tight out of the drum. Now use yours. Everything's gone. Get in here, all of you. The gold. It's yours. It's all gone. That son of a bitch. I'll kill him. Vex, put it away. Right now. We can't afford to lose our heads. We need to calm down and focus. Do what he says, Vex. This ain't helping right now. We do it your way. For now. Delvin, Vex, watch the flagon. If you see Mercer, come tell me right away. We'll have a sleep. Have a drink. All right, so... Carlia's claims are true. Mercer has basically stolen everything from the Thieves' Guild vault. Look, so what happens before next? Before I help you track Mercer down, I need to know what you learned from Carlia. I mean, everything. Look, before I help you track Mercer down, I need to know what you learned from Carlia. I mean, everything. Mercer killed Gallus, I, not Carlia. I feared that was the case. From that last entry in Gallus' diary, it looks like he was getting close to exposing Mercer to the guild. Anything else? Carlia was behind the Trying Golden Glow Estate in Hunting Brew. Maven, eh? Clever lass. Was there anything else? Gallus, Carlia, and Mercer were what? nightingales. Nightingales? But I always assumed they were just a tail, a way to keep the young footpaths in line. Was there anything else she told you? No, that's then it. And I have an important task for you. I need you to break into Mercer's home and search for anything that could tell us where he's gone. He has a house in Riften? Right. A gift from the Black Briars after they kicked the previous family out. A place called Riftweald Manor. He never stays there, just pays for the upkeep on it. Hired some lout by the name of Bold to guard the place. I'll take care of it. Be careful, lad. This is the last place in Skyrim I'd ever want to send you. Just find a way in, get the information, and leave. And you have permission to kill anyone that stands in your way. What's Better missing from the vault? Be, what did he leave? Mercer took everything. Even all of our plans are gone. Plans for what? 
Before Mercer took over, Gallus started collecting every bit of material he could on locations the guild could heist. Museums, keeps, estates, you name it. By the time Mercer took over the guild, we must have had a few dozen. I don't How could he clue. open the vault that door? door is impenetrable. Without two keys, it's impossible to open. I have a key, Delvin has a key, and Mercer has a key. That's it. There are no other copies. Better question would be, what did he leave? Mercer took everything. Even all of our plans are gone. Before Mer... Museums, keeps, estates, you name it. I don't have... Without two keys, it's impossible to open. What's the I, best way to get question. into Riftwield Manor? I've only set foot inside a few times myself, and that was in Mercer's company. If you can get past his trained watchdog, I think your best bet might be the ramp to the second floor balcony in his backyard. I don't suppose the ramp is easy to access. No. It's some sort of crazy contraption Mercer commissioned for quick escapes. I'd wager a well-placed shot at the ramp's mechanism would lure it in a hurry. All right. Careful at Mercer's place. I don't want to lose anyone else to that madman. All right, this is the ideal mission for Fleet. A stealth mission. I can't believe he emptied the And vault. license to kill. Right from under our noses. light lunch I think what we'll do here is uh, fleet is definitely going to case riff wheel manor during the day when you can kind of size up what's going on there what do you need my thane lead the way and then we'll actually take Riftwield Manor after nightfall. So let's cruise around here. The back gate to Riftwield Manor is really the only entry that makes sense. It's off the beaten path. It's sort of, you know, semi-concealed. We should be able to come up here and work the lock without being seen by anyone. There's the goon. Vault, and if we look up here, we can see that ramp sticking straight up. Somehow there's a mechanism there that we have to release in order to drop that ramp. I'm fairly certain that Vold is someone we're going to have to eliminate in order to have enough time to figure out the mechanism on that ramp and actually get the thing dropped. We can't have him wandering around. And that's going to make it impossible By to do it gods, silently. It's true, isn't it? A so, has attacked White Clan. Oh, with me. he's going to have to go. But right now, we still have some daylight. So we are headed to the stables. And I've Fleet is going to gather up Nefei, who has been working here at the stables for the last 24 hours or so. And he Do is some, going to yes? assign her a new job. Let's not waste any time. All right, let's go. So, with regard to Nefei, Fleet really is trying to right break her you. down, and by that I mean he is he is trying to break down her ego Working a bit. At the Rift and Fishery is tough. And make her understand that being a student of Sumerian means being subservient. And he's more than willing to take away any and all privilege he needs to and have her work like a dog in order to communicate that message. How long he's going to do this depends purely on her reaction and whether or not she embraces what's going on. Here's Constance. She is now in charge here so many orphans, since we eliminated so Grelod. To open their hearts to them. All right, then. So Fleet is going to talk to Constance 
and he is going to leave the Fey here, here to Why assist so with anymore? the orphanage, free of charge, doing all those things that Constance doesn't have the time the to do. Makes. You know, roar! Like really? cooking, for example. So at this Constance point, we can use the I'm tweet commands. Again, know. we are going to dismiss her, but dismiss her and tell her to hang out here which means she'll just kind of go about her business here. She'll cook, she'll clean, she'll sleep, she'll do whatever she needs to do here while we're gone. And we will come and gather her up yes. when we're ready. I can't believe Grelot is dead. I had no love for the woman, but to be murdered in cold blood. Still here. I want to thank you, dear viewers, for coming back to the story. Always a pleasure to read your comments and to uh, see all the participation in the conversation threads. Makes it worth doing. And I am steel, very, very glad that everyone seems to be enjoying the, the story. It's quite gratifying, so I'll probably keep doing it for a while. At this point, generally speaking, I try to shield all of you from crafting, but I'm going to do a little crafting here. Um, I'm going to buy up whatever iron ingots the man has and craft some daggers, and then I do have a surplus of leather. I'll probably uh, kind of divide that up into strips and leather and finish things off by making some bracers. If you need any more smithing work, come see me again. If I can squeeze out a couple additional levels in smithing here, that'll help us toward our next level. Our next character level, that is. The other thing I've considered doing is making a couple of... Um, pouches to add to Lydia's gear to increase her carry capacity a bit. Not so much because I need her to carry things, but because I can make them and uh, some of the bandolier extras kind of look cool with uh, when they're mixed with the other gear. So I might try a few things on her. I don't see her wearing a bandolier, but I could see some of the belt pouches and things looking good with her equipment loadout. So we may do that too, we'll see. Firstly, I just want to crank out some daggers here. As I said, generally speaking, I try to uh, shield you all from the crafting. I stop and do it from time to time, but generally I don't record it just because it doesn't make for great storytelling material. Okay, here I can make some... dye some leather black. Now, I think that is going to give me what I need to make a couple pouches for Lydia here. Black ones. I don't want the shoulder pad or the bandolier. I want the front left, maybe. We'll do a front left. And we'll add that, kind of see how that looks. Actually, one other thing that I probably should do here is I did want to use up some of this extra leather that I have. And I can get some levels in um, smithing by making some leather bracers. So we're going to stock up on some leather strips. I just need leather and leather strips to make bracers. So that's a pretty inexpensive thing to make. We are, of course, acquiring leather all the time on the trail. 
So it makes that fairly easy to do. So we'll make some braces. Make a few of those. Looking to protect yourself or deal some damage? Let's see. I am going to sell him these bracers I've made. If you need any more smithing work, come see me again. All right. I'm right behind you. And we will give this pouch to Lydia. I am sworn to carry your burdens. Yeah, where was that now? I'm kind of uh, weighed down with a lot of extra stuff since I confiscated all of Nefei's gear. I'm carrying that too, which is not ideal. But there's no place that I feel safe in putting any of it here. So we will just keep it on us for now. What in the name of oblivion do you want? I'm right behind you. Okay. We are going to dismiss Lydia at this point. And we're going to go ahead and get some sleep. We only got six hours last night. And we've got a job to do tonight, so turning in earlier in the afternoon is probably wise, because we'll probably spend most of the night out working on this project for Brynjolf. So let's see where we're at here. Oh, look at that. It's already 4.30 in the afternoon. So if we can get some quality sleep. Still be out around midnight or so. So what Fleet knows right now of the Nightingales is only what he has been told by Carlia, which is not much, and what he has read in a single book that he owns called Nightingales, Fact or Fiction. And that book is filled with all kinds of stories and conjecture about whether or not the Nightingales actually exist and sort of anecdotal evidence uh, throughout the course of history of their existence, including uh, prisoners who claim to be members, things scroll, uh, scrawled on prison walls uh, proclaiming the existence of the Nightingales, uh, a strange stone near Riften that bears a symbol that matches a symbol found on some sort of book or piece of paper in past history having to do with the nightingales so I mean there's there's really all kinds of information in this book however none of it could be actually sort of represented as fact so at this point what he has is bits and pieces of information some of which alludes to the fact that the Nightingales are in the service of a Daedric prince called Nocturnal. So that's going to be weighing heavily on his mind right now and what all this means. Here we go. I'm going to come up over this rooftop now. From here, there's a guard that usually walks a path around this back alley. We're just going to sit tight. We'll watch for the torchlight if we see him coming. Yeah, here he comes. We drop down the other side of the peak and let him pass. And we're going to scoot along here and drop to the ground behind him and make our approach. Now what I want to do is I want to wait until Vold is near the gate. Well, there he is right there. No guards coming. I'm, he's back is facing us, so I'm going to approach. We're going to pick this lock and try to jump him right away. Not going to give him time to move. We're not. We don't want any, any extra distance to cover, right? And we also 
don't want to give him uh, any opportunity to turn around, so we want to jump him immediately. That's what we're going to do. We're going to jump immediately and then quickly close the gate behind us, hopefully, so that uh, when that guard returns, nothing looks out of the ordinary. Here we go. Close this. That worked out pretty good. We even have Vold's body tucked right up against the wall here. Now we got a. Supposedly, there's some kind of mechanism that's going to release this door. It's pretty dark. But the mechanism is going to be somewhere around these planks. You can see where it's hinged. It's got to be somewhere around the hinge. There's no way that we can physically touch it, so we are going to try to shoot it. Well, that didn't work. I think we need to go to first person. Let's try again. Get right under it. There we go. And just like that, Fleet has gained entry. Of course, we grab the key from Vold, so hopefully we won't have to pick too many more locks inside here. Now, my assumption here is that Vold has a crew, that he's not just watching the place alone. Uh, so we'll proceed with caution. Oh, stuff. yeah. Walk into the city of free men. Okay, we're gonna move up here. In position. Is anybody in here? Don't think so. Sounds like the guy is in here, but I think he must be downstairs. So I think we're. We're safe in looting this room. I'm going to take all these clothes, I think. Amulet of Kings. I don't think I have this book. With three beers down, the orc did frown, and bid the elf goodbye, for none could know. Okay. Twas not for show, and someone had to die. All right. I want to be careful not to knock anything over that might make sound, so we're going to be careful as broomstick. All right, we need to take this, take this guy downstairs here. Yeah, there he is. He's not facing a terrific direction. Let's get up behind this pillar. He's sort of facing us a little bit. Never enough gold. To try to hug the wall. Good haul. Get up close. Go get him. All right. I think we have eliminated the opposition in the house. Now our objective is we need to scour this place and look for any additional clues as to where Mercer may have gone. Okay, nothing down there. Eh, 
Eh, it's worth a hundred septums. We'll take the statue. I'm sure we can find someone who'd buy that. Alright, this looks like his study, which makes me think this might be a good place to look. There's some money in here, some letters, things like that. Hmm. I am not accustomed to working under these conditions of secrecy, but your generous compensation for the inconvenience was more than adequate to complete the project. Both the balcony ramp and the floor mechanism were interesting projects, and I hope you'll find them functioning to your surprisingly specific specifications. Huh. Kilthinius. To keep our eyes open for that name, it would be interesting if that was a character we bumped into later on in Skyrim. Oh, I love this shopping list. Cauterizing agent kind of sticks out in the middle of that list. Okay, we're not keeping any of that. That's the back door. Suspicious cabinet. Look at that. False back panel. And we... Oh, salt. Taking the salt. We are in. Three weeks in prison is not enough. Only when you have nothing left do you build your heart anew. It took me two years. Two long years dying, day by excruciating day, lost in the dark, clawing the walls and eating rats. Only one who has lived this waking nightmare will ever understand the despair. But this is the place I had to go. This is what prepared my heart my spirit to receive the blessings of Sidus. I entered the spoiled child of privilege. I suppose this is why I was subjected to such horrors, some kind of sick joke. I left a black, empty vessel, waiting to be filled. There were no days or nights, only darkness. There was no passing of time, only the endless void. There were no voices but for the ones in my head. The darkness was complete. For the longest time I thought my eyes had been put out, but eventually the darkness began to transform from the source of my fear to my protector. The black became a shield against my enemies and a warm blanket around my frozen soul. My dark savior, teaching me as a mother lovingly helps her little ones to walk for the first time. My savior darkness taught me how to move, how to survive, how to pull the darkness to me and bend it to my will. This is the place I had to go. Save your darkness, the blessed void. After only three weeks in prison, Nefei will never understand this. She will never be able to be like me. No one is like me. M. Not certain how you managed to get your hands on that item we discussed, but I'm more than pleased. I thought you'd simply wait until it was being transported from Castle Dower to its final destination, but according to what I've heard, it vanished right from their armory. I wish I knew how you were able to slip by the guards, bypass the portcullis, unlock the armory door, and break into that dwarven puzzle-locked chest. 
You need to teach me that little trick sometime. I've left your cut in the usual drop spot and might have another job for you soon. R. We have reached the bowels of Mercer Frey's hideout. We ran the gauntlet of traps he had laid for us, made it through, unscathed. In part, that was because of the stealth perk that we have for evading traps. I believe it's called Lightfoot. But that certainly doesn't help you with the swinging blades and all that kind of stuff. Fleet was able to use his dexterity to get through that. So here we are. We've got a bunch of loot. We're going to grab this stuff. We've also got some clues. We've got, a, I believe, what is a plan that he has laid out down here. I'm guessing it is um, going to give us the clues we need to finding Mercer Frey or to figuring out at least where he went from here. Got a bunch of books, but I don't think there's anything here that's worth anything to us. Aedra and the Daedra. I think I have one of those already, but I'm not sure. That's definitely a book that Fleet would be interested in. And then we've got The Bust of the Gray Fox. I believe that is something that we can give to Delvin. Yep. We've actually made a ton of money off of Delvin in the last two episodes. If you remember, in the last episode, we turned over to him a Dwarven Puzzle Cube that we found in Caselmo's Tower. We also turned over a Golden Ship model, which we found in Snowvale Sanctum. We got 600 septums for each of those. My guess is this Gray Fox bust will net us at least another 600 septums, so you do the math. That's actually a pretty decent profit for three items. It's really excellent. I'd like to find more of that stuff. And here we are. So obviously Mercer has taken the time and spent the money required to craft tunnels that take him all over the Ratway. Stay cultural blog. Gotta keep my eyes out for birds. Found this bust of the gray fox. Worth anything? Well, well. I was looking for this little beauty. If you happen to cross any other unusual trinkets like this, be sure to bring them to me. I promise it'll be worth the effort. Must have come from Mercer's place. He'd admired the Grey Fox for some time. Sure, I'll buy it from you. Here you are. Wonderful. Yeah, look at that. Another 600 septums. This is getting dangerous. Don't let anything get a jump on you. I will certainly try. Now I think we need to go and talk to Bryn Yelf. We will turn over what we found. And we'll see what's next. My guess is Mercer found a way to tunnel into the vault. We've scoured the town and I've spoken to every contact we have left. No sign of Mercer. Any luck on your... He wasn't there, but I found these plans. Shore's beard. He's going after the eyes of the Falmer? That was Gallus' pet project. If he gets his hands on them, you can be certain he'll be gone for good and set up for life. Then we have to stop him. Agreed. He's taken everything the guild has left, and to go after one of the last greatest heists is just an insult. I've spoken to Carlia and made amends for how the guilds treated her. Now she wishes to speak with both of us. Quickly, we have no time to lose. Until next we meet, Lot. Not now, Lot. Carlia said it was important. Let's have a little chat, see what Carlia has to say. Carlia said it was important. I promise you, all your. Brynjolf, the time has come to decide Mercer's fate. Until a new Guildmaster is chosen, the decision falls to you. I, lass. 
and I've come to a decision. Mercer Frey tried to kill both of you. He betrayed the guild, murdered Gallus, and made us question our future. He needs to die. We have to be very careful. Mercer is a nightingale, an agent of Nocturnal. And it's all true. Everything I heard in the stories. The Nightingales, their allegiance to Nocturnal, and the Twilight Sepulchre. Yes. That's why we need to prepare ourselves and meet Mercer on equal footing. Just outside of Riften, beyond the southeast gate is a small path cut up the mountainside. At the end of that path is a clearing and an old standing stone. I'd ask you both to meet me there. I have some preparations of my own to make. I'll meet you at the stone. I'm preparing to leave for the standing stone. What is it? Well, that's it then. Want to talk? Go ahead. We have our orders at this point. Carlia would like us to rendezvous with her and Brynjolf at the Standing Stone for the Nightingales, somewhere outside of Riften here. We've got some other things to take care of, however, before we do that. We're going to gather up our followers. Go to thinking. And then leave from Beyond there. I'm the Dragonborn. I just don't know it yet. So I think first I'm going to go gather up Lydia. I left her here at the Bee and Barb. She should be well rested and fed by this point, I think. So, time to head out. Where is she? Yeah, there she is. Long life to you, Thane. Yeah, that would be nice. Lead the All way. Right now, we're going to go gather up Nefei. And we will be ready to exit Riften. And that will be the close of right this episode, you. brothers and sisters. We are going to be clocking in at over 50 minutes on this one. I want to thank you all for your patience and your continued viewership. This one gave us a little bit of new perspective into Fleet's background, a piece of his background that we have not seen before or heard of before, and gives us some understanding for why he is the way he is and how severe his issues really I'm are someone who can get things done i like that let's not waste any time it's a rare glimpse and i think we'll probably talk about it more but it's not so bad anymore in detail real good to us. in the next episode But for now, we've reached the end of another episode in our story. I want to thank you all for joining me. We are going to leave a little donation here. They seem to be fairly uh, hard up. So we are going to Go ahead and support the orphans. So I thank you all for taking the journey with me, and until next time, may all that you do be swift, quiet, right and deadly. You. And to all Skyrim assassins, I salute you. Silence is our battle cry. You've been watching Aranus Arcana, a Skyrim Let's Play. If you liked this video, please rate, like, and subscribe. For more information on this and other Couch Warrior broadcasts, visit me on the web at www.couchwarrior.tv.